This is the Mechanica Evo CNC router from the Belgian company Mechanica. I've been testing it for the last two months and made some really awesome projects with it. But is this machine something for the average maker or rather businesses? I'll try to answer this question as well as show you some really nice features of the Evo, but also talk about some design decisions I didn't really like. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Zellerfeld. Wait, 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 don't skip. This might be really interesting for you because Zellerfeld is currently looking for the best 3D printing engineers globally. They are an innovative company with the goal of putting 3D printed shoes on every foot in the world. Zellerfeld is backed by the folks who helped to start Tesla, SpaceX and PayPal and they are developing their factory of the future in Hamburg, Germany, where they are growing their team. So if you are a PCB designer, software developer, material scientist, technical buyer, 3D printing operator or just have a passion for working on 3D printing technology of the future, then check out their job listings linked below. Even if your position isn't listed there, but you're enthusiastic about using additive manufacturing for large-scale, totally customizable footwear of the future, manufactured on multi-material tool-changing printers, and you have a unique skill, then get in touch with them. Thanks to Zellerfeld for sponsoring this part of the video. The Mechanica Evo is not my first CNC router. One of the reasons why this channel exists is actually a wooden CNC router I built more than 8 years back. I later upgraded to an aluminum framed machine and now Mechanica sent me their latest CNC router for this review. As a disclaimer, Mechanica sent me the machine free of charge, but they didn't influence the review process in any way. Mechanica is not new to the CNC market and they have been selling their Mechanica Pro routers since 2019 as well as a screen printing device. The Evo, which we'll be taking a look at today, was financed right around a year ago in a, in my opinion, very legitimate Kickstarter campaign and has shipped all the machines from the campaign until the end of last year. The Evo builds on the design of their Pro machines and primarily is a more affordable option with simpler motion components. It comes in three different sizes from the S that has a working area of 600 by 600 millimeters and costs 2700 euros excluding tax to the L that can machine parts with the size of 1 meter by 1 meter and costs 4000 euros. It's definitely not cheap, but still in a similar price range as comparable machines on the market. I, heavy hearted, chose the smallest version of the three simply because I didn't have the space for a bigger one. The name Evo by the way comes from the possibility to upgrade the machine to a pro version with an upgrade kit. Mechanica said that this would be an option available at the end of last year, but I haven't seen anything in their store yet. My machine got shipped from Belgium and as far as I can see it only ships within Europe. It arrived on a pallet with a bunch of boxes containing the aluminum extrusions, electronics and accessories. Everything was nicely packed and labeled bags and included everything to build the router and machine the first parts. Unfortunately my kit was missing the mount for the spindle, but within a couple of days they shipped a replacement. Everything else was there, with even some spare parts that are either easy to lose or might need to be replaced at some point. Something else I unfortunately don't always see with other machines was the certificate of conformity, which ensures that the machine complies with certain regulations and might be a requirement to even use it legally in companies or educational facilities. The assembly process was pretty straightforward and an hour long video with English text prompts guided me well through the process. Since I didn't build the whole machine in one run and filmed some bits from time to time, it took me around 5 hours to fully assemble the machine. Most of the steps are explained very clearly and make building the machine a breeze for beginners. Still, sometimes I wished for an assembly or an explosion drawing because sometimes even I was not 100% sure on which side and in which orientation I had to mount parts. Especially beginner friendly is wiring because not only is there no need to work on mains voltage, but all the wires are pre-crimped and come with color coded plugs. A real nice touch. You first start with the base frame and then slowly integrate the motion parts and the electronics. 
The motion system is very similar to what probably many of you know from current 3D printers, where V-slot extrusions and rollers with eccentric spacers are used for linear motions, just a bit beefier. I at first was a bit worried because that didn't seem to be too rigid, but since the Evo uses multiple quality rollers for the setup, it ended up way sturdier than I expected. Some of the V-slot extrusions are even machined, allowing even more smooth and precise movements. The axes are driven by big NEMA 23 stepper motors. Two are on the Y axis, one on the X axis and one drives the trapezoidal lead screw used on the Z axis. The longer X and Y axis don't use lead screws but get driven by conventional timing belts. This setup has the benefit that the router can move really fast and it eliminates backlash but adds quite a bit of softness into the axis. I mean, this router is primarily designed to machine wood and doesn't need the stiffness of a metal mill, but it just looks a bit disproportional. As we'll see in a bit, the design works for its intended application, but there are wider belts available which would require a different integration, but would have made the machine just a bit more rigid. Since the machine uses stepper motors that don't have any positional feedback, there is a mechanical end stop for each of the axes. This is especially nice for the Y axis, since the end stop position is adjustable, you can very easily and automatically square the gantry that way. As said before, all the wiring and crimping is pre-made and I just had to route the cables through the cable chains and plug them into the motors and switches and the color coded connectors into the separate electronics enclosure I placed under my machine. I screwed the big emergency stop button to the front as well as the control panel with the touch screen. The control panel is basically half of a keyboard with custom stickers used for the machine's general control like jogging or typing custom G-code commands. Then there is the touchscreen next to it, which lets you control the rest of the machine. You load your decode files via USB, or you can even set up a shared network folder using Wi-Fi connectivity. The interface lets you change settings, watch the job's progress, or just browse around on the Linux system. That's all really nice, because you don't have to bring your laptop to the shop to get it all dirty. Even though the touchscreen is not huge, I was able to control most things without big problems, but if you're not a fan of the touchscreen interface or have thick fingers, you can also just plug in a mouse. The software and hardware running on the Evo is from Planet CNC, which comes with good documentation if you need to research G-codes or cycles. All of that is running on a Raspberry Pi that sits in the electronics enclosure together with the 24 volt power supply, the Planet CNC control board and the stepper motor drivers. Nothing on the inside should and needs to be touched and all of the I.O. is routed to the connectors on the outside. Just a quick note here, the stepper motors are powered by default and have a really whiny high pitched sound even an idle which drove me crazy. While you set up a job, you can disable them, but that will use your homing position and squaring procedure. The Mechanica Evo also comes with a tool length probe that is used to reliably and repeatedly measure the length of end mills. The crocodile clamp connects to the bit and closes the circuit when it touches the metal target. It is a nice addition, but it actually drove me crazy at some point during the review. I didn't know that if the clamp and target touch, the machining goes into some kind of a restricted mode and it doesn't move anymore. Since the isolation over the clip slipped during use, it was randomly causing issues that took me a while to figure out and fix. I also modified the target with another wire to use the sensor as a touch probe. This allows me to precisely and automatically find the center of pins or parts if you do two-sided machining and need a reference. The Mechanica Evo ships with an AMB 1050 spindle with 1050 watts maximum power. It's air cooled making it compact but also quite loud during operation. It has an RPM range between 5000 and 25000 making it usable for metals and wood machining. But I had the impression that the power output is significantly low at low RPM. I've been using the same one for many years on my other CNC routers and have been quite happy with it. The standard kit of the router comes with a spindle that's controlled manually with a dial wheel. However, if you spend 300 bucks more, you'll get one that's directly connected to the electronics board and therefore can be controlled via G-code 
And it also turns off if you push the emergency stop. I find the upgrade price way too high because you can get a completely new digitally controlled spindle for the same price the update costs. The spindle uses custom collets that you can get in a diameter range between 3 and 10 mm and therefore fits a wide range of end mills. The stock machine doesn't come with a machining base, so you can either buy a wasteboard for 200 bucks with the kit or just go to your local hardware store and get a piece of MDF cut out. Mechanica's wasteboard comes with T-nuts and bolts to mount it to the rails, as well as a surfacing end mill to machine everything flat and threaded inserts to later mount parts on the base. Let's now talk about the reason why I think that this CNC router might be one of the best solutions for someone who doesn't have experience with machining. Mechanica did a great job providing easy to understand instructions, starting with the assembly video and small things like color coded cables or a spacer for easy alignment. After assembly even I was happy to have step by step instructions on setting up the machine and doing the first cuts. This included a whole calibration guide on how to surface the wasteboard, drill the holes for the inserts and square the machine. This might sound trivial for professionals, but makes learning how to use such a machine that much easier and quicker. There are several blog posts on different CNC machining topics provided by Mechanica and video tutorials on creating G-codes with Fusion 360. If you have a CNC router yourself, this even might be interesting for you. Mechanica recommends using Fusion 360 as the CAM tool of choice and provides a well-working post-processor. But since the EVO or better Planet CNC accepts basically any G-code, you also have the option to use tools like Estelcam or for example the programs from Vectric that I used a ton when I got into CNC machining. During the last two months that I have been using the machine, I realized a couple of projects that have been on my list for quite a while. First I machined a nice learning tower from my daughter that mounts onto an IKEA stool and which she loves. I did all the design work in Fusion 360 as well as CAM. Most of this was simple 2.5D machining to cut out the bananas and the outlines. Here I noticed that the motion system with the belts isn't as stiff as one would like to have because the dimensions of the parts always were a couple of tenths of a millimeter off. Depending on the machining mode they were either too small or too big. So I ended up leaving 0.5 millimeters of material on the contours and used the spring pass where I just machined that thin remaining material away to get more exact dimensions. Here I made heavy use of another optional but in my opinion a necessary accessory for the router and that's the dust shoe which attaches to a vacuum and helps keep the workshop clean and especially with hardwood like this reduces dangerous dust to a minimum. Unfortunately, it's also another 200 bucks, which I find quite a bit in comparison to the price of the whole CNC router. At least it works and is nicely designed with a magnetic quick swap curtain. Next, I machined I think my most complex project to date. A friend of mine wanted me to machine an electric guitar body for years, but my old machines just weren't big enough. The body is more complex than it looks at first glance because it has these angle sections and most challenging a 3D chamfer that goes all around the part. Making it even more complex, the body had to be machined from both sides that of course had to be aligned to match up. The whole job had 23 operations in the Fusion 360 cam setup using 4 different tools and took over 2 hours to machine. Even though this was only the pine wood test piece, the result looked stunning and I only had one slight mishap where the zero position somehow got lost. The final body will be machined from swamp ash wood in a couple of weeks. During cleaning I spotted another problem with the open belt setup. All the dust and chips that fly around during machining can potentially land on the belts or the rollers and might cause problems in the long run. It was easy to clean up but is probably a task that needs to be done after every use. And of course I had to try machining some aluminum which worked better than I would have expected. The Evo S nicely chewed through this piece of aluminum at decent speeds and with very nice chips and a good surface finish. Even though this router's main use should be wood and plastic, it can definitely be used for more challenging tasks if you don't expect the performance of a milling machine. 
Unfortunately, one of the limiting factors right here is not the capability of the Evo, but the clearance height on the Z axis. With the Wasteboard, you only have around 70 to 80 millimeters of clearance, which doesn't allow you to machine thick materials. Honestly, the 40 millimeter of the guitar body was right at the limit what's possible, and I couldn't even go all the way through the material. Mounting a vise, for example, is hardly possible, and the few times I used one to cut open some 3D printer's nozzle, I had to remove the wasteboard and fix the vise directly to the frame. Still, in the end, I had a great time with the Mechanica Evo S. I had to get used to the new interface, and the missing part during assembly and the mishap of the touch probe temporarily weren't motivating. The motion system doesn't seem to be perfect for the dusty environment, and the belts look a bit thin. Still, the results showed that it works, and Mechanica are not the only ones who use such an approach. Everything else was super pleasant. The kit is easy to assemble, the wiring is top notch, and the integrated computer with touchscreen and keypad makes it easy to use and very compact. Where it particularly shines is the guidance that Mechanica gives for everyone who is not a pro in CNC machining with their tutorials and guides. It's not cheap at around 3000 euros with all the accessories, but well worth the money if you want to use this machine as a tool and need something that works and you can rely on. I'm totally honest here. If you find joy in building your own CNC router from scratch with self-sourced parts or modifying an existing one, there are way cheaper solutions around that might give you better results in the end. I think in this case you aren't the target audience for Mechanica, because with its price tag it's rather for businesses who want to get into CNC machining and where time is money. In such a case you want something that works, is capable yet easy to use, especially if you're not experienced. And in such a case the EVO CNC suits very well and should give you a return on investment soon. If for you the way is the goal, go ahead and build a CNC router yourself. This honestly taught me so many things when I did it back in the day. But what's your opinion on these semi-professional machines? Do they suit business needs and might they even be suitable for makers? Or should you rather spend even more on a router with linear rails and ball screws? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this review interesting. If you want to support my work, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member and check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one, auf Wiedersehen and goodbye. <coughs> An electric guitar, 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 trick, guitar, electric guitar.